Hey guys, welcome to another video here on the Aviation Pro channel. And this video is going to be a little bit different than usual. Now a few weeks back there was an Air Astana Embraer 190 which had a pretty interesting incident. Basically what happened that, is that the pilots lost all the controls of the aircraft. And part of the incident actually had to do with the ailerons being reversed, which is of course pretty weird, right? Now if you read the F Herald article linked in the description, which is by the way a great website if you want to read anything related to aviation incidents or accidents, you'll find some information about what might have gone wrong in this uh, particular incident. Uh, in there you will also see a video by Smarter Every Day, a great channel that I also follow for a lot of years. And there, um, Destin from Smarter Every Day actually uh, has a video about a bike with reverse controls and basically what happens in that video you will you definitely check it out you will see that basically when the controls are reversed riding a bike is totally different and you basically have to start from scratch learning how to ride that bike again especially at a later age so what i thought would be interesting to do is you know what would happen if all the flight controls actually reversed on an aircraft? Now the pilots of the Aerostana got the Embraer 190 down safely, luckily, and you know, great job by those pilots. But I can kind of imagine what they went through when you see the video from the bike. Now, I'm not a real world pilot, I'm just a flight sim enthusiast, but the benefit of a flight sim is that you can actually manipulate the controls and simply with a tick of the box, reverse all the flight controls. And that's what I'm going to do in the video. So uh, when you see me give left yoke input, for example, normally the aircraft would fly to the left, right? Well, in this case, it's going to steer to the right. And with the elevator, same thing. So pushing the nose, pushing the yoke forward, normally bring the nose down. In this case, it will pitch the aircraft up. And I've also reversed the rudder. So let's head into the cockpit and see what happens. All right, guys, welcome into the cockpit of the Boeing 737. As you can see, I'm using the PMDG Boeing 737 in the prepared version 4 simulator. And that's simply because this is the aircraft that I'm most familiar with in my flight sim experience. I just wanted to pick this aircraft because, you know, just like my bike, I'm a Dutchie. You know, that's the vehicle that I'm most familiar with. So, you know, that would make the experiment more interesting, of course, to see how I and my brain reacts to the uh, opposing flight controls all out of a sudden. So. Right now the autopilot is still on control, everything is fine. Uh, I've reversed the flight controls, uh, the, I've lowered the yoke right here in the sim, uh, so as I don't get distracted by the movements of that yoke, because the movements will still be you know, left and right according to the actual aileron in the boot. But the movements of this yoke right here that you see on this camera uh, is reversed. So is the rudder in the bottom right corner, that's also reversed. The only thing that's not reversed is the engine just engine thrust like you know just the same as riding your bike you, know, you would not bike backwards so let's see what happens i can i'm gonna disconnect all the automation the auto throttle the autopilot and uh, let's see if i can keep the aircraft in control and hopefully land it one more thing by the way that i've also changed just now is actually the uh stabilizer trim so trimming down will actually trim the aircraft up um with this button on the yoke right here all right so I guess if I don't change too much on the flight controls, I should still be fine, but I'm interested to see what happens. Let's find out. Okay, here we go. I'm going to disconnect the autotrottle first. And here we go with the autopilot. Okay, so if I steer... Yeah, <laughs> that's definitely different. Now I guess with an aircraft it's a bit easier to manage, but it definitely feels weird already. Now I've set some turbulence in the area as to make it more easy for myself but oh whoa <laughs> okay i have to pull the yoke oh wow 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 this is going crazy i mean imagine what these pilots went through of course i did not exactly simulate this of course the invest investigation is still ongoing but you can already imagine just the first time you try this if everything is reversed how weird it is it's it's kind of hard to describe it here on video but all right okay so the airport that i'm gonna land on is bratislava airport and um i need to turn right uh, let's see if i can make this turn properly okay going fine so far you know th this part is i guess fine but as soon as you get into landing or even more adverse weather like these pilots were in it's gonna probably be worse look i want to pull back of course on the stick that's my instinct and I bet in the real world in general this is just a whole lot worse. This is still a sim, but still. It does really feel like you need to learn how to fly the aircraft again. It's really weird. So 
see I want to keep steering right, but actually if I want to steer right I have to give left aileron input. Now so far pretty good, of course I'm not maintaining altitude accurately at all, but it's not that bad. Well, <laughs> you know, especially you just want to respond, respond to altitude changes and you just want to make a correction and in your instincts if the pitch is up you would push the yoke forward, but in this case you have to should not do it so you know, and, and at this stage I'm kind of figuring out what the aircraft feels like but I'm gonna try and land and see what happens then as you can see here on the navigation display the airport runway 3 one is over there so I basically need to follow this extended center line I'm doing it all visual by the way I'm not relying on any navigational sources except from the ILS that I've tuned I guess what you can already see from this at least at this stage is that Riding a bike is a very complex mental process that's going on in your brain. And flying, you have a little bit more time to correct, you know? I mean, if the aircraft pitches down, you have more time to correct for it and see how the aircraft responds. Uh, but I guess as, as we get close to the ground and try to fly the ILS, well, <laughs> we're gonna run in more trouble. I should really, oh yeah, I should push forward, reduce some speed and no, oh. <laughs> this is crazy. Aileron input is actually pretty fine. It's relatively easy to, but as soon as you want to turn in a certain direction, you know that you want to turn right. Then that, that's where it starts to go wrong. Now, of course, rudder is gonna also be reversed. So on landing, I will have a crosswind from the left, as you can see on the navigation display. Okay, we're about 25 miles out, I believe, no, 30 miles right now. So we should have some time to catch up. Um, oh, whoa, 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 okay. The trim is really, that is really difficult as well. You see already as I'm getting closer to the ground, it's becoming more important to remain stable. Okay, let's reduce speed a little bit to 180, perhaps to one. Thankfully they are not reversed. Okay, I need to get some altitude. I encourage you to try this. It's kind of fun to try. It's you know a little experiment, you know, to see what happens in your brain when all the flight controls are reversed. And I can tell you, it's definitely weird, especially as you get close to the ground. So, a few things that I gotta remember for the flare um, is to push, yeah, left rudder in this case, and then push the yoke forward in order to raise the nose for the flare. I'm really flying way too low. Okay, let's get the gear down already. I'm trying to maintain about uh, 180. Well, let's reduce 160. Flaps 10. Okay, as you can see, the ILS signal is now uh, alive. So we can use it as a reference. I have, I'm a bit more stable right now, but that's actually just because I'm not really giving any control inputs at this stage. Slowly catching up with the localizer and actually try to minimize control inputs. That's actually the best way to handle this. And I think that's actually what the Aristana pilots did of the Embraer 190. Uh, you know, as long as you minimize control inputs, you can actually just, through small corrections, see how the aircraft responds. But man, this is weird. <laughs> You know, the landing is really the phase where your instincts kind of kick in, I guess. But those instincts are not the right control inputs right now. You have to reverse them. So I need to, again, push the yoke forward to flare. Give left rudder instead of right rudder. And then normally I would, could left, would give left aileron in order to correct for the wind. But now that would be... Um, yeah, right aileron then <laughs> to correct to put the you know wing into the wind and make make sure that the left landing gear touches down first. It's really oh, no, no, not that easy. <laughs> this is weird, guys. The closer you get to the runway, the worse it gets. Okay. Oh no, I should see see where the instincts kind of mess things up now. This is hard. This is hard. <laughs> You know, at 5,000 feet it was fine, but... Oh, man. Okay. I feel a little bit more stabilized now. I'm going to minimize control inputs as much as possible. No, we should go down. Pretty well aligned with center line, so that's fine. Oh, 
one though. <laughs> it's getting worse, guys. I can tell you. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna make it. Right on the sleep. direction whoa okay let's go around because this is not good <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> see the closer you get to the runway the more and more the instincts your flying instincts kick in and the worse it gets I gave full left rudder because I don't know why <laughs> oh that was crazy yeah the rudder is also reversed <laughs> Wow. Let's look we'll take a look at the replay of that landing. I bet it was quite bad. But I think we just had a very rough touchdown, pretty much a tail strike I think, and then go go around. Pretty bad. <laughs> Alright, so we're in the go around. Oh, I should really reduce the thrust. Um and I'm just gonna fly uh, right down into runway 3 one and try again. But again, as, as long as you're at altitude, it's kind of fine. This, the more and more inputs that you have to give upon landing... And you can see, the weather is not even that bad. I did add some turbulence and crosswind, but... Man, if there was a real storm ahead of some sort, it would have been a lot worse. It does really feel like... Just like the bike example from Smarter Every Day, this feels exactly as... <laughs> As weird, you know, it feels like you have to learn how to fly a well, even though it's a simulated airplane, and even though the flying characteristics are not as accurate as in real life, it feels like you have to learn to fly in the simulator again. It's crazy, of course. This would be hard to simulate in real life, probably the FAA won't let you, but oh man, <laughs> it's crazy. What I also notice as soon as I you know, have to flick a certain switch in the cockpit or something, like in the background I usually just kind of keep flying the aircraft, but then once I do that I actually give the wrong controls in this situation, you know, the wrong direction of controls. So you can see as soon as you're distracted, also in the bike video, as soon as you're distracted uh, by something, it just starts to go wrong, even if you are kind of stabilized at this stage. So yeah, pretty interesting. I guess it helps if you are trimmed down trim down and then just use the forward motion of the yoke to maintain attitude so you don't have to worry about pitching down yourself you only have to worry about pitching up that actually helps you can see the aircraft is really trimmed down as soon as I center the yoke the nose pitches down but actually it helps in this stage so I only have to give forward yoke motion in order to pitch up when necessary oh, oh. <laughs> instincts kicking in Oh no. <laughs> Left. I'm gonna try to bring the aircraft down, guys, but no promises. Oh. Left rudder. Idle. Okay. Oh, this is bad. <sighs> terrible, guys. Terrible. <laughs> it really feels like learning how to fly this airplane again. We probably would not have survived this in real life if really all the flight controls were re reversed. Oh, man, I'm not even aware, sure why I ended up on some sort of remote platform right here. Alright guys, just for fun I'm gonna try one more landing, see if, if I can work this out. So for this particular landing I actually decided not to uh, talk at all and just to fully focus on the landing. And as you can probably tell from my face I am indeed fully focused on the landing. Now again, um, the moment where the instincts kick in and your natural responses towards landing and flaring the aircraft kick in, it's very hard to suppress 
you know, um, those instincts and to actually give the con correct control inputs, giving the reverse to controls. Now, as you can see right here, just right here in the video, I'm kind of stabilizing the aircraft. I'm uh, approaching the runway quite well, but as soon as I want to attempt to, uh, you know, go back to the center line and flare the aircraft, things start to go wrong and I actually end up on the wrong side of the runway. Uh, I do touch down and, you know, at this stage I'm able to maintain some directional control by braking the aircraft, but otherwise it's very difficult to flare and maintain directional control. Alright guys, well as you can see that was not easy at all. Um, very, it's weird, it's just weird. I highly encourage you again to just to try this yourself, it's great fun to do this as an experiment. I guess what I can say from this, a huge thank you to all the engineers that keep making sure that all the flight controls on our aircraft in real world, in the real world keep working properly and in the right direction. Uh, of course the Aerostata case was an exception unfortunately. You know, a great job by those pilots that under those conditions they were able to figure out how the aircraft responded to, you know, inputs that you know seem normal in this case it was sort of reversed and it oscillated and you know it, it's just weird it's really your brain really struggles i guess the more time you spend doing this um the more familiar you, you will get with you know controlling the aircraft in this way just like the bike example by smarter every day but <laughs> it's it's crazy of course i've only practiced three landings i've been flying for what about an hour 45 minutes so you know you do get used to it a little bit especially at altitude but landings ah, terrible so uh, feel free to do this yourself and try this at home i hope you enjoyed watching this video here on the aviation pro channel if you'd like to support this channel uh head over to patreon.com slash aviation pro your help would be much appreciated and um, i hope to see you again next time if you subscribe to this channel for a new video and um I wish you good luck with flying, whether it will be in real life or in a simulator, and make sure you fly safe.